go back to the present. Oh, I kept my hair. <laughs> I've still got my oh moustache. Oh my god! <laughs> is it still hiding the stretch marks? It certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at Maplewood Studios. Wow. Uh, demonstrating these ridiculously affordable and immensely good LTD guitars. We certainly ESP. are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there's not a lot wrong with these guitars. In fact, there's an awful lot right with these guitars. It's essentially my good friends at uh, ESP in the UK always send me a list every six months or so of... Uh, Triple always, wreck. Uh, send me a list every six months or so of uh, all the guitars that are coming up to being phased out and discontinued. And there are always some monster, monster bargains on there. So I go down the list and I pick out all the best ones and I buy them all so that I can get them back to Anderson's uh, with the very best deals on kind of uh, ESP guitars that are about to be phased out. <laughs> the EC256s. You can't take me seriously with my moustache, can you? It took me months to grow this as well. I want to break free. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I want to break free. Play the lick. Mime it, mime it. I'll, I'll sing it. Wee I can do it. I might even be keyboard, I don't know. Hang on, hang on. I can do it proper. God knows! <laughs> Chicken. Give me the horn! It's getting a bit ASS show, isn't it? It now? is a bit. Yeah. It is a bit. Let me turn we'll, it. We'll hold that back for later. Where were we? Well, your friends at ESP. So, yes. So, one of the guitars, uh, or two of the guitars, in fact, that were on uh, the, the recent kind of clearance list that I saw were the EC256s, which, uh, as you'll probably recognise, is, is based on the classic ESP Eclipse single cut, sort of homage to Mr. Gibson, Les Paul. Um, but the, the EC256 is a little thinner than a, than a Les Paul would be. Same kind of idea, mahogany body with a maple cap. Um, but I guess what's most obvious about the, the 256 is it's a distressed finish. <laughs> here aren't through chappers shredding them a million miles an hour for the last half an hour they, this is how they come out the box designed so that you know when you're on stage you, you look like you've uh, done a world tour with your axe um, doesn't really change the, the playability I suppose there's a there's a tiny bit of wear on the back of the neck which perhaps does give it a slightly more sort of lived in feel what well, it means that you don't get on stage and ponce around and worry you're gonna ding it because it's been dinged for you. I think that's the main thing, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's, it's, we, we were talking before <clears throat> just saying, I sell lots and lots of very expensive guitars, you know, uh, guitars that beautiful flame tops and everything. And they're made by luthiers and craftsmen at the absolute pinnacle of their profession who really, really know how to build some of the best guitars and sort of instruments ever. And then people buy them and go, oh, but I can't play it because I might put a ding on it. So yeah. I'll, just, I'll just leave it in the case and I'll look at it occasionally. And I always think, such just a Just ding it, just ding it already. Such ding it on the back so you don't know and yeah, don't worry or about do, it. Or, you know, I mean, if, but, you know, if, if you've got a lovely guitar like that, you know, and you, want, and you want to gig it and you're worried about dinging it, just, you know, just be careful with it. But do play it. It's such a crime. <laughs> This is kind of a little bit haphazard, but kind of quite cool. It's, I mean, there are bits here where you think, really, would that happen? But then there are bits here where you think, that's actually quite nicely yeah, done. Yeah, th this stuff here, as you see quite commonly, uh, you're 100% right there. If, if you take this guitar and go and compare it to a genuinely 50-year-old guitar, yeah. it's chalk and cheese. Yeah. 
the idea really from here is that when you're on stage and the audience is, you know, five or six meters away from you, um, or in my case, as far away from me as they can possibly get, it just looks like an old guitar and it's kind of cool, just sort of lived in. Uh, and of course, as Chapa said, you don't have to worry about, you know, bashing the headstock against a cymbal yeah, or anything like that. I've also noticed that this is genuine rather than finished over, which yeah. means that it will just continue to where, where you would naturally play. And since these are sort of They've, they've started up the process off for you, so as you play it and you shred here, you'll, you'll get more yeah. of your own natural mark and there. The, and these as long as you put your thumb there. These like. aren't like some of the really sort of expensive custom shop ones where the relicking is uh, all slightly unique and done you know, to the luthiest taste. These are, if you like, sort of factory relics, so every single black one is going to have a mark here and a mark here and a mark here. And... <laughs> The first thing is that out of the box, in the hand, there's a feeling of immense quality. Yeah, as with I think most ESP products. Immense you know. quality. It's nice and light. The neck is a nice thin feel. The yeah. frets are really well done. It's. I mean, I didn't really have to tune it that much when I got it out. I didn't have to really set it up. It yeah. just plays like a great guitar. And that's what it is. Nice inlays. The sort of the blocky. What are they like? They're like little flags, flags aren't they? They're but flags. They kind of look like the block inlays that you get on a Les Paul. Well, it comes with an Anderton's like flag as well. Yeah. Typically speaking, I mean, the, the, the Eclipse, uh, the EC256 has sold anything from sort of four to five hundred pounds during its lifetime. Um, now that these are on a clearance deal, these are going for $299. <laughs> And ninety nine pounds. Oh my giddy aunt! I know it's cheap, isn't it? That's incredibly cheap. It's uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sort of you know, a lot of good. It, well, no, I'm just thinking you, you you could buy a lot worse guitars for two hundred ninety nine yes. pounds than one of these, couldn't you? Um, coil tap, coil tap here, yeah. So here is the uh, guitar central position with the humbuckers fully active. <laughs> Let's tap that bad boy. So it's a nice versatile guitar. So essentially gives you sort of six different tones on the positions here. So three with the humbuckers and then three with the single coils. We've got two volumes. Uh, and of course the back one here is the tone. Uh, real sturdy kind of tunematic style bridge piece here, so easy to adjust the action. Hmm. Passive pickups, and they're quite dark voiced. So we've added a bit more sort of mids and hmm. high end into the, the tonality of our amplifiers to get them to sing for you. <laughs> Thank you. 